Good morning, I'm back. This is a continuation from yesterday's video, potting up some more dendrobium. This is Marisa and it's my orchid life. Look at these beautiful girls that I also got at EFG Orchids. Um, like I said, I purchased them in threes because that's how I like to pop them up. Now these girls are a little bit more sensitive. Um, they'll throw a fit, you know, they get stressed. You're repotting them, they get stressed. They'll throw a little bit of a fit. Some of their buds, they're, some of these are in buds. Some of their buds will fall off. Um, their canes will kind of yellow out and flowers will fall. If that does happen, just uh, cut the, um, the stem, cut the, the spike. It's okay, they will concentrate on their leaves and growing more um, canes, they're good. And they'll, they'll, they'll spike again. So yeah, sometimes that does happen. Um, I'll be surprised because these gals are a little bit more sensitive. I'll be surprised if it doesn't happen to them. But um, yeah, so here I'm gonna pot up some more. And I'm drinking my little cafecito from my cafecito cup that I bought at the Orchid Den from Josh. He makes these. Isn't this so beautiful? Oh my God, I love, love it. He has a lot of pottery that he makes too. He makes all his pottery there. Um, some really beautiful orchid pottery. And he makes these cups. Okay, so what do we do? These are the pots that I usually use. They're the orchid pots. See, they have holes in them. Um, I believe these are about uh, six inches. And again, I use some styrofoam for the bottom. And um, for this, this gets good drainage. And then the lava rock and charcoal. Remember, fill it to the rim. Fill it to that line. That's what I do anyway. Okay, now I'm going to remove them from their pots and take take out as much sphagnum moss, clean them up a little, and see what's in there. Oh, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention is when I remove the sphagnum moss, I wet these down. So it softens the roots, it softens everything. Um, this way it's a little easier to remove everything. Okay, so when removing the moss, I wet these down really, really well to soften everything. So it's easier to remove. Okay, that's all I wanted to mention. Okay, sphagnum moss removed, beautiful roots. Here, spraying them down with my hydrogen peroxide, antifungal, antibacterial. You could also use Fizan 20. Um, I don't have any, I have some, but I just don't have any um, prepared. So that's why I'm using that. It's kind of the same idea. This is a little bit more um, uh, natural. So I try to grow as organic as I possibly can. Sometimes um, you can't, but uh, for the most part, it's worked for me. Anyway, so now on to laying them on top, letting this dry off just a little bit and putting them into the pot, setting them up on the pot. So I set these beauties up in the pot, lots of roots. I probably could have used a bigger pot, but that's okay. And I strategically placed them into the pot. I staked them up so that they don't move. And then I used uh, some rhizome clips to keep them, to really keep them in place. Now I'm going to put some lava rock and charcoal on top just so that the roots aren't so exposed. And then I'm gonna find some 
um, not sphagnum moss, um, some um, Spanish moss around the yard and put that on top as well. As you know, the, uh, the Spanish moss will um, help with humidity and the stones and the charcoal gives aeration and then it's kind of like everything plays its part. All right, here we have it. Oh, by the way, I like to use these little baskets and fill it up with uh, slow release pellets um, and put them into the pot. You know, it feeds them a little bit like that. I um, get those baskets from Amazon and then I use the dynamite that I get over at Home Depot or Lowe's um, to put in the baskets. So there you have it. Oh, he had this one too, so I bought two more of these. There you have it. All three. They turned out pretty good. I love them. So I use these cinder blocks um, to, uh, as, as, you know, plant fans. <laughs> I like them because they look kind of organic and rustic at the same time. Anyway, these are big mamas, so I'm not going to keep them here. We're going to move these around so that it looks a little better. Let's see how I can do this. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful that turned out. So I moved um, these um, Cattleya down to the bottom, and I put these on the top. Perfect. It looking good. So there you go. Just some ideas for anybody who wants to pot up some dendrobium. This is what works for me. I'm in Palm Coast, Florida. So it is very humid out here. It's perfect for them. Um, it does tend to get uh, colder out here than it does in Miami. Miami is just a the perfect, most perfect weather um, for orchids that you could ever have. Here it gets a little colder. Um, if it gets too, too cold, I will move some orchids um, into the lin blah, 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 excuse me. I will move some orchids into my lanai that are a little bit more sensitive to the cold, but uh, it doesn't stay cold for long. So yeah, guys, it turned out really pretty. Look at, oh my God. They are just so beautiful. Oh, I just love dendrobiums. They are so beautiful. They're very hardy. Um, like I said, they'll probably throw a little bit of a fit. I'll be surprised if these guys open up. If they do, then they're fine. But yeah, um, like I said, if that happens, just cut their spikes off. And um, they'll concentrate more on... on uh, their canes and their leaves and um, growing more canes. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a blessed day and uh, to the next time.